Hey guys, this is Kev again from Kripke the Chameleon and Friends. I hope everyone is having a great day. Today we'll be performing surgeries on two different types of goldfish. So guys, recently I went to a place that had a lot of goldfish, beautiful orandas, different types of goldfish, they had kois, they had a pond outside, they had also a lot of indoor aquariums, just lots of beautiful fish all over. And I came across a little bucket with these guys, a tiny little bucket that was very shallow. So I asked him, what's going on with these guys? And he said they were due to be put down. He had them in a little bucket because they were emaciated, they weren't eating, and that's due to the fact that the oranda, he's completely blinded by his wen, also known as the crown that's on top of his head, so he can't see at all. And over here, we have a telescopic goldfish. It's like a black moor, but orange color. And this one has a severe case of swim bladder, swim bladder issues, where he's completely turning upside down, or he's toppling over from the front. So they both were very emaciated, and they were due to be decommissioned or put to sleep, shall I say. So I said, hey, I would love the opportunity to work with them, see if I can rescue these guys, and see what we can do. I've performed many wen trimming surgeries in the past, which were all successful, and this will be my third attempt to do something from as far as swim bladder, which was also successful. So there's no guarantees these guys are going to survive their surgeries, but they were already due to be put down, so I'm going to see what we can do to save them. I'll likely keep them, or may even rehome them and give them better homes. So right now they're sitting here in a quarantine tank. It has to be shallow so he wouldn't flip over. And this way I give them a little room as well as the ability to eat and fatten them up a little bit. The guy did me a favor by trying to feed them so he can put on some weight since I said they were very emaciated. So he kept them for a little bit and he finally handed them over to me. So we're going to see what we can do to save these guys and hopefully they'll have a great life. Otherwise, they just sit there, they don't do much, don't swim around much, except for when you're feeding them. It's definitely a poor quality of life, and they don't deserve that. So let's see what I can do to help restore their lives and let them swim around and be happy just like normal goldfish. Now that we have everything prepped for surgery, I'm going to quickly go over them. I happen to have a little canister here with a hose that I'm going to use to hydrate them. Over here we have two little containers. I'm going to use it to put them to sleep as well as wake them up. If I go a little bit to the right, we have the instruments. I'm going to be using some of these tools. I also have a syringe needle. We have a little table that we're going to perform the surgeries on. Over here we have some solution to do sterilization of the tools. I also have some clove oil that we'll be using for anesthesia. And we'll use this little cup to mix the anesthesia. If I go a little more to the right, we have here a small little tank that we're going to put our swim bladder goldfish in. And I also have some API stress coat as well as aquarium salt if it's needed. So now I'm going to go ahead and sterilize those instruments and we'll go ahead and bring our goldfish out. Now that we have our telescopic goldfish, he's actually having one of his better days. We had him fast for a little over 24 hours. If that wasn't done, he'll be upside down completely and I'm sure that's very painful. You can tell he still has swim bladder disorder by the way his head is dipped down and his back of his tail fin is lifted. If he had any food in him, he'd be flipped upside down completely. We also checked to make sure there was no constipation, so we gave him the peas, we put him in a high fiber diet. We did all the different things and ruled everything out, so this is definitely swim bladder disorder. So it's more of a permanent thing. So what we're going to do is try to give this guy a little bit of relief and help extend his life because the typical thing, which you should do in this case, is euthanize the fish. But we definitely want to see if we can save this guy and help extend his life and as well as bring him some relief. I took him into a dark room and I put a very bright spotlight on the top where his spinal column is located. This is the front region where his caudal, his cranial lobe is located to the front and his caudal lobe is more to the back and it seems that it's shifted. So his lobes are shifted with his organs, so I'm pretty sure he's going through a lot of pain. So we're definitely going to bring him some relief, and if it doesn't work out, we'll have to put him down. But hopefully that's not going to be the case. So let's go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and mix the anesthesia. So we're going to be using the clove oil. 
you're going to put anywhere between three to five drops per gallon. Okay, let's go ahead and shake this around. And we're going to apply it to the container where we put it to sleep. And now we're going to go for our goldfish. Make sure we mix it around. And we're going to take our little guy out. Come on, little buddy. It's okay. So we're going to leave him in the solution anywhere between five to ten minutes until he's at rest and then we'll take him out and we'll go ahead and proceed with the procedure. Okay, now that our guy is inverted, his breathing is labored but he's still alive, so we're going to go ahead and take him out. Come on little buddy. This is going to be a quick procedure. You're going to take the needle. And we're going to go into the swim bladder region. It's okay, buddy. So we're just going to be taking just a few mils out. You don't want to take all the air out because he does still need some for buoyancy purposes. And then we're going to put him into his recovery tank. Go ahead, little buddy. So we're just going to give him about anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes to recover and we'll go ahead and put him into the other tank. Now our little guy is now waking up from his quarantine tank and he's doing a little better. So we're going to monitor him for the next 24 to 48 hours just to make sure he's okay. We took a little more than a mil out of him. The most important thing is to make sure he's not going to be turning upside down and he can have freedom swimming again. Which he's definitely exhibiting. So we'll watch him for the next couple hours and see if everything is coming along okay. So now we're going to go ahead and proceed with the wen trimming surgery of his friend right here. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. As you can see right here, he's completely blinded. You can't even see his eyes. It's completely consumed. So we're going to help rescue your little guy. And you'll be okay. We're finished with the first procedure. We now have our round of goldfish, so we're going to go ahead with the wen trimming surgery. We already started sterilizing our instruments. We have new gloves as well as new bedding. So here is our Aranda goldfish. He's in clear fresh water right now. And we're gonna go ahead and move him over to the anesthesia. Come here, little buddy. It's okay, it's okay. So we're gonna leave him in here for about anywhere between five to 10 minutes. There's already anesthesia present from the previous surgery, and we'll see how everything comes along. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes, and now that our guy is under, I noticed when he inferred that he had a lot of sores on his body underneath, as you can see. Poor little guy. That's from sitting all in just one place, and this is exactly what the problem is. So we're going to go ahead and put him here. And I'm going to show you the way his wen completely covered his eyes. As you can see here, he was totally blinded. So we're going to go ahead and try to remove some of that. Oh, poor little guy. All right. So let's go ahead. Okay, my little friend. 
for the sweetheart. Okay, I'm gonna pick him up. As you can see, his eyes is completely consumed. You're gonna get in there. <coughs> My little dog, Kinkachu, is right there looking on. She loves to see a rescue. Sweetheart. So you guys pretty much get the gist of it. You're gonna just try to remove the wind so you can have some sort of visibility as you can see his eyes now coming out. Here you are, buddy. I can see you now. So what we're going to do now is hydrate him a little bit. All right. It's all right, buddy. You're coming along. You'll be okay, sweetheart. Let's just get some of this off of him, put him in some water. Okay, buddy. So we're just gonna leave him in here for about half an hour until he revives. And then we'll put him back into his quarantine tank. It's 40 minutes later and our rander is up and about and doing well. He was so happy to see me when he woke up, he just started splashing everywhere. He's no longer bogged down by his overgrown wen, which was so heavy that it weighed him down a bit, and that led to a lot of the sores that you saw on his stomach. So now he's moving about, and that should be able to heal very soon. As for his other friend here, he's also pretty much doing well and swimming about. I'm going to monitor him for another 48 hours just to make sure he's eating, and he's no longer flipping upside down and from there I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can find these guys some new homes I'm definitely not gonna send them to a pet store so guys this is what we do and I'll be sure to do my part from as far as rescuing pets so please be sure to share this video and give us a like and also subscribe this is Kev from Kripke the Chameleon and Friends one love and as always God bless take care guys